Redditors who spend a lot of time in seclusion, at sea, in the air or out in the wilderness, what's the creepiest or most mysterious thing you've seen, found or experienced? I spent an entire year in my cousin's finca in Colombia. It's very deep into the mountains and 90% of his land is covered in forest. That whole year was basically one massive nope. I can say that at least every other day something completely crazy would happen. One of the things I remember the most was La Ronda. One day I was picking some tomatoes when suddenly the whole mountain goes silent. Not a single animal made a sound. Note that this is Colombia and there are many birds there. Anyway. I stop what I'm doing and listen closely because what the fuck. That's when every fucking critter imaginable starts coming out of every hole and every crack and starts hauling ass uphill. Massive tarantulas. Huge cockroaches. Beetles. Mice. Rats. Etc. Anything that crawled on land. Basically. Then the dogs started barking and whimpering. That's when my cousin yelled La Ronda. La Ronda. Which basically means the round. The round. He tells me to get inside the house. He gets this bag out with some sort of poison and starts pouring it outside the house. I then hear what sounds like running water coming uphill from the trees. I looked outside and saw what was probably millions of ants crawling up the mountain and eating every living thing in their path. It was absolutely terrifying. I couldn't see the ground because there were so many fucking ants. Luckily, the poison worked and they crawled around the house. My cousin was happy. However, because the ants killed whatever pests were around. This a kinda reverse story. I go camping now and then. And there's really nice lake out in the woods about 3-4 hours walk east of Oslo. Norway. It's a popular-ish camping spot. So. A friend and I are running out of firewood and it's pitch black. Bad planning plus whiskey drunk. So we grab our flashlights and head out to get some more bits and pieces to keep the fire going. Now. The lake is large and dotted around the lake we can see about 3-4 fires going. Other happy campers. One campsite in particular is rowdy. It's a good 200 meters across the lake but we can hear them chanting and singing football songs and generally be obnoxious. It's about 2 a.m. now and we want to sleep. I can do this weird thing with my voice. I let all the air out of my lungs and then breath in really fast and tighten my voice box. I can create this ungodly. Banshee. Inhuman scream that is loud and does not sound human. So I go for it. Within a second. The noise from other campsites stop and the fires are doused within 10 seconds. You could hear a pin drop all across the lake. Silence. Sheer terrified silence. Even my campmate was freaked out, he'd never heard me do it before. TL. Doctor I am the scary noise in the night. I was camping in upstate New York a week after two prisoners escaped. This was a high notoriety escape and was national news. My girlfriend and I had hiked and camped for two days before this. We were very comfortable. Had met a lot of awesome people. But everyone was on alert of the escapees. We had settled in. In a remote area upstate New York with no one around that night. I was sound asleep that night. At 5. 30 am I had started to awake but stayed in my tent. Not trying to awake but to maybe go back to sleep for an hour or two. Not long after I was awake did I hear rustling in the woods around our campsite. At first it was a few rustles. Which caught my attention but not enough to be alarmed. Suddenly. The rustles are right outside our tent and I am on edge. Before I could even tap my girlfriend. All hell breaks loose. My tent is slashed open with a knife while I am watching. My heart almost went through my throat. Before I knew what was happening I was being pile driven into the ground by men with guns. Thankfully I had noticed in the seconds that the men had police armor on. I started screaming out my name. My address. My social security number. Everything. My girlfriend was even jumped on and forcefully subdued while she was sleeping. Once everyone's adrenaline calmed down we showed our IDs and proved we were just camping. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. And also for the police officers that subdued us. Turns out we were not far from where they were just spotted. And the police hadn't come across anyone in days. 
They had thought for sure they had come upon the SKP's camp. God. I really wanna tell this to people. So a few months ago. My GF and I went to a public state park. It is not like a middle of nowhere. But still not many people around and it was in the afternoon that a strange thing happened. When we were heading out of the park. We saw a car that was traveling on the opposite side toward us. Then the car turned right. It was a sedan. We thought there was a road right there. And when we got to the section where that car turned. We didn't see any road. But only high grass and big trees. I asked my GF. Did you see that red car just now? I thought it turned right around here. He said. I saw a car too. But it was white. Wasn't it? We look at each other's for a few seconds and quickly left that area. That was weird. Edit. For the people that downvoted me. I want to clarify this. I didn't make this stuff up. It was just weird to me. And since this is an opportunity to share what had happened. I just want to tell people. In case someone with the same experience can explain the event. My GF siblings had a few strange things happened in the past at one of the house they rented before as well. She told me the story. I brushed it off. But after my encounter. I honestly began to question my ideas about those. Spooky stuffs that I have heard from people. In 2008 I was in the navy. We were 100 plus miles from any land. It was about 3 to 4 am. Off the coast of Peru. I was an electronics technician so I worked in radio with one other guy, a radio man, and we just sat up scanning on HF. UHF and VHF radios listening for drug runners. We intercepted a UHF signal that played a short piano preamble. Followed by a haunting. Computerized sounding woman's voice reading numbers. 11. 9. 4. 6 etc etc. This went on for about a minute. Then the preamble repeated followed by the same number sequence. Then it was gone. We recorded the transmission. Wrote the numbers down. Informed the captain and shortly a message was sent off to the area commander about the strange message. The reply we received was to disregard. Creeped me right the fuck out. I came to find out that this is a numbers station and while the phenomenon is not entirely understood. It's likely a method for getting a secure message or code to an intelligence agent in the field. Over an insecure method of communication. Since the numbers could be attached to a one-time code. It's basically indecipherable. TL. Doctor intercepted creepy numbers station transmission while in the navy. Scared the bejesus out of me. Two years ago I lived in a flying community in northern Manitoba. I lived there for two years and tried to experience everything the location had to offer. I got into hunting and took to exploring around on the ski do that was at my disposal. One day I went grouse hunting down the ice road on the ski do. I had been out for a while in minus 35 C and managed to get a grouse. After I got the grouse. My only thoughts were on getting home. It was only then I realized how cold I was. I was already shivering and I was about 17 kilometers away from the town. I hadn't seen anyone all morning either. As I started back I could only go so fast. Otherwise the wind would wick away any heat my gear had trapped. That was the first time I really felt mortal. That was the first time I realized that if I stopped moving. I would die. It took me well over an hour to get back near civilization. When I finally got in the door I was frantic. My wife realized I was in the beginning stages of hypothermia and pushed me to alternate between jumping jacks and push-ups while she prepared me something warm to drink. That was probably my creepiest experience. That is the last time I will go out alone like that. If this community ski do had have quit on me, which was very possible, I would have needed some quick thinking to make it out of there. Lots of dumb choices that day. Friend and I went camping when we were around 18. Found an awesome flat area off the side of a rather steep hill that overlooked the lake nearby. I can't remember the name of the lake, not important. But it was large enough that we couldn't see the other side. We were there for a couple of days. Were fishing. Setting a couple snares. Pretty much pulling a servitorman. On the third night we hadn't lit the fire yet. We wanted to see the stars. Being Toronto kids. 
We rarely got to see too many. Sure enough. Moonless night. No light source around anywhere. And there are the stars. I pointed out a few passing satellites, I miss having such great vision. He named off the constellations that he knew. We were chatting then we saw it. On the horizon. A small. And very bright. Red dot appeared. Looked like a gun laser dot. We both sat there racking our brains and making aliens jokes. But sure enough it was getting closer. Soon it was the size of a dime. Then a quarter. But it's taken the shape of an eye. And yet it got closer and closer. We started thinking that maybe it was a forest fire or something. Maybe it really was aliens with a nervous laugh. I remember him getting his hunting knife out of its sheath. And I did the same. Ready for anything. Finally it's the size of a football. Actually lighting up the area we were in. We were able to see the red glow off the trees. And. The lake. About here is when I realized we were looking at the rising blood moon. The lake was perfectly still and the moon was reflecting off of it. He physically slapped himself into a facipum. We were city kids after all. Advice to everyone in this thread. Camping in a new area? Check with the state national park you'll be camping in. Even if it's not a fee area or if you'll be camping where you're technically not supposed to be. It's always a good idea to check in with them and see what they have to say. Sketchy people been around? They'll tell you. Bears in the area? They know that too. That is more or less common sense but if you're ever out surveying, caving, camping or hiking in the middle of goddamn nowhere, I'm talking 60 plus miles from a house in the middle of the desert, check in with the nearest Bureau of Land Management office. They'll likely not give two shits about you camping for a little while. They'll know you're there if anything goes wrong and they can give you a little information on the area before you head out. It might not seem like a big deal at the time but it can really save your ass if you're in a bind. I worked in New York Harbor for quite a few years on tugboats. Assisting large ships in and out of the harbor. I work offshore now and, un, comma fortunately haven't seen anything too creepy out here. To set this up. Spoiler being that it's not supernatural. New York Harbor is busy. All commercial boats communicate with each other on one VHF station, if you're interested. Get a VHF handheld and tune into VHF 13 sometime. Where we're going. What we're doing. How we're going to meet. Etc. Everyone uses this station. Rugs. Badges. Ships. Ferries. Coast Guard. Well crewed. Yachts. Etc. So it's jam packed. Always squeaking. Pretty annoying sometimes. I came into work a day after Hurricane Sandy hit New York City. Disregarding the hazards of driving the roads on Staten Island where the boats are stationed. The entire harbor was shut down due to fears of debris and shoaling caused by the storm surge. For the next week. I sat on the boat. Getting paid. Waiting for the harbor to open. The point I'm getting to is that the radio was dead silent. One of the busiest and congested waterways in the US and nobody was moving. Nobody was talking. You could turn the interference rejection all the way down. The volume all the way up and only hear a faint background buzz. It just felt. Wrong. Unnatural. A bit of a post-apocalyptic vibe. Anyway. That's my creepy sea related story. I once climbed the wrong cool wire on the middle Teton after getting bad route advice. My camera worked fine before and after entering the cool wire but when I tried to take pictures from the base it showed only weird ghostly images of the rock with half the pixels missing. I ended up stranded alone on a ledge at 12,500 feet with no sleeping bag. Search and rescue said I was the third person they knew about soloing the route that year. One died and the other barely survived with a severe brain injury. I turned out okay but a dude died the same night on the route I should have been on. Not sure what my camera was trying to tell me. I used to live in Spain because my father was a government official. We lived near an area that was frequented by pilgrims. I saw a few dead bodies while I was there. A lot of the pilgrims are really old. And they can't handle the physical toll that the hike takes. So they suddenly drop dead. Or they rest on the side of the road and they never wake up again. I once had the displeasure of seeing one of the corpses up close. The face of the dead woman was contorted. 
she looked terrified like death had taken her by surprise. As for Supernatural. I remember in 2013 I got up early. And I traveled to a path that was frequented by pilgrims. I wanted to go stargazing. And there was relatively little light pollution out in the countryside. When I arrived at my usual spot I noticed there was a man in brown robes not too far off in the distance. When I yelled a greeting towards him. He turned his face towards me. He was unnaturally pale as if he were a corpse or gravely ill. His eyes were bloodshot and he looked like he was crying. He said not a word to me and turned around again. Continuing to stare off into the distance. I remained for a few minutes. But shivers kept running through my spine. And I decided I shouldn't be there so I left. Later that evening. A train derailed at Santiago de Compostela. Which is the end point of the pilgrimage and 80 people died. I am think this is all a coincidence. And I probably met some sleepy pilgrim. But I told my grandma and she said it was the spirit of street. James the Muslim killer. As the pilgrim's path is dedicated to him. She says he was trying to warn me of the tragedy that was going to take place later that day. This wasn't necessarily a lot of time. But I was in solitude. And it was at sea. When I was 23 I was at Dockland for a boat rental club. I bought myself a 27 foot Catalina sailboat and lived on it at the docks for about a year while I worked for the boat club. I would often get toasted on 101 proof peppermint schnapps and go joy sailing late at night on the Chesapeake Bay for kicks. My main sail tears. And my atomic 4 engine breaks down. I drift out of the channel. Drop anchor. Plug in my backup batteries for power for my anchor light. And bed down in my forward berth to wait until morning for one of my co-workers to tow me back in. I'm about a mile offshore. Well out of the channel in about 60 feet of open water when I hear a rhythmic thudding on my hull beneath me. It was like someone was doing a semi-fast snare roll with closed fists against my hull. There was nothing in my head that I could figure could make that noise happen besides someone diving under by boat and literally beating on it. I went topside with my flashlight to investigate and couldn't see anything out of the ordinary. And the sound continued on and off for about 15 minutes then stopped. It was a calm night with nearly no wind or waves at this point. And I visually couldn't see what could have been making the noise. It came from midship so it couldn't be the motor being weird or something. And I checked my bilges for any anomalies and couldn't find any. It left me pretty shaken up because I just couldn't figure what could make that sound as loudly. And as precisely as it was. I could feel the bumps hitting against the fiberglass hull. I eventually got back to sleep and made it back to the docks next morning. I dove on my boat that day to check for anything amiss and didn't find anything off. Needless to say that was the last time I went out alone at night. Ah I think I'm too late but I have a good one. Last year I was on an outward bound trip in the Rockies on a 14 day expedition. In case you guys are dipped to the outward bound course. There is a solo about 3 stroke fourths the way through the trip. Which is pretty much you're in your own area out of eyeshot and hearing range of other group members for a set amount of time. This expedition had a 2 day one. Comma so on day 11 or so we stop. To do ours. Mind you this is a 9 day hike from the closest base camp. And we went about a mile off the rugged trail we were taking to set up. I woke up on the second day of the solo and looked out of my tarp and saw a guy about 20 feet away in a solid cherry red hoodie with the hood draw strings fully pulled, so his face was entirely covered. Comma I figured this was one of the instructors. Because they go around sometime on the second day to check on us. So I waved at him and smiled. He then took off uphill and I lost sight in the trees. Come the next day when we are all back and talking about it. I asked which of the instructors had the red hoodie. Turns out neither of them did. There was a man 10. 000 feet up a mountain in the middle of the woods who walked by me sleeping in a tent. It had potential to go pretty awry. Edit. A letter. The thing that gets me sometimes is the sounds. Sometimes you'll just hear some animal and it sounds like nothing you've ever heard before and you can't imagine it being anything like any animal you've ever even heard of. That combined with pitch blackness of the woods can creep you the fuck out. Worst one was a couple months ago sitting under a tarp because it was raining a bit. 
Small fire going a bit away with no other light. Heard a sound with a rhythm you would expect from a bird but with a deeper sound than any bird ever. Sound continues to repeat every couple seconds and slowly gets louder like it's getting closer. Then stops. Never heard it again. But those couple minutes until I convinced myself it was gone I was creep the fuck out no doubt. I used to live in rural Panama in a community with no electricity. The whole town is inside by sundown. Around 7 p.m. And asleep by 9 p.m. One night. I'm outside at around 11 p.m. photographing stars and I have to turn my headlamp off while the camera is taking the picture. Usually about 30 to 150 seconds at a time. 30 to 150 seconds of almost complete darkness. When I finish a photo. I'll turn my headlamp back on and look at my camera to adjust settings and take another shot. One time when I turned my headlamp on. I saw a pair of eyes just about 15 feet away in the bushes staring at me. I've got friends who have worked setting camera traps throughout the country and I've seen picture evidence that there are still several types of big cats alive and well in the area. I lean down to pick up some rocks. Look back up. And the eyes are gone. My house is about 100 feet away. I do my best to turn my handful of rocks and dinky tripod into weapons and run as manly like as I can back to my house. I never went back out to take pictures at night. Got stalked by a mountain lion on a hike. It was late at night. We're in a group of about 5. And didn't have enough flashlights to go around. So we gave one to the person in front. And one to me, in back. I felt like I was being watched. And so I real quick flashed the light around and turned my head. Saw a pair of green eyes attached to a body slink back off the trail a little bit. Our light wasn't powerful enough to get a super good bead on it. But every 30 seconds or so thereafter. I would turn around and flash the light up the trail. Probably saw something about 75% of my turnarounds. It followed us for probably one stroke two hour. Until we were 10 minutes from the cars. The people I was hiking with didn't notice. And mountain lions don't often jump large groups of adults, but I wasn't really about statistically. We're probably fine at that point. No one else noticed. And I didn't say a word while it was following us, really didn't want to run the risk of a panic. I live on a compound by myself, I know it sounds waco -y. But it's really my tiny home. Workshop and a couple of other buildings for food equipment storage and a guest room. One bad snowstorm knocked my area hook. So I decided to hunker in for the long haul. I spent almost two weeks without leaving. Three days in. I get woken up to a knock at the door. I get up to answer it and halfway there. I realize the only way this guy could knock on my door is if he broke the lock. So I grab my shotgun and ask him through the door who he is and what he wants. Guy says nothing and keeps banging. I go out the back door and sneak around front and I see a man who is on the ground. Covered in blood. And shouting, albeit quietly, for help. Turns out he was driving and crashed and dragged himself 5 miles down the road until he came to my place. By then he realized that I forgot to lock the bottom part of the gate and weaseled in. Luckily he survived. Posted this previously. The creepiest dive of my life. Two buddies of mine and I were on a night dive in the Puget Sound hunting prawns. It was about 1am and we're a good 100 feet deep. The pitchest black you could imagine. We used to do this thing on night dives where we'd get in a circle. Turn off our lights. Then stir up the water and watch the bioluminescence float around us like floating stars in a black watery space. Beautiful. Only this one time we turn off our lights. Stir up the water. And the water glows just enough to reveal a fourth person sitting in our circle. We were at a dive resort so it wasn't so odd to see another diver. Only it was 1am, we'd seen no one else prepping a dive at the dock. He was also alone which was odd considering the dangerous conditions of a night dive in those waters. And he had no fins or gloves. I don't know how he swam so well without fins or didn't get hypothermia without boots or gloves. We wore dressuits because it was so cold but this dude was in a wetsuit with exposed skin and we thought we saw a giant gash in one of the legs. So the three of us all notice him and were too fucking scared to move. I can hear my buddies panting in their eggs. 
And the guy just smiles and waves. Then swims away. Whenever you think you're alone and someone just shows up. Like in an alley at night. It's weird as fuck. 100 feet underwater at night is terrifying. I used to work at a weather station in northern Canada. It was a 24 hour place so it was manned round the clock. And often by someone who was awake. I worked nights many many times and I didn't see much creepy stuff. But heard a lot. Fairly nearby was a place where a couple of local guys housed their sled dog teams. You'd hear them yipping and barking now and then and it was quite routine. Other times. It was apparent that a bear or wolf was over there and bugging them in their cages. Because it was a lot more than normal barking. It was the sound of shit scared dogs freaking out. I only heard this next thing happen one time. But pretty clearly something had gotten in there and killed at least one dog. I heard the sound of a living critter screaming while it was being killed. And it totally knew it. There is no other way to describe it. If you heard it. You'd know. When I was a teen I used to go off-roading mountain biking in the big forested parks in my suburban town. I had been gone for a few hours and was nearing the farthest end of the park. It was starting to get late and I was deep in the mudded secluded trails. I turned a sharp corner on part of the trail and saw a man. Disheveled. Maybe in his mid 40s or 50s just standing there. I was surprised and it stopped me in my tracks about 10 feet away from him. The trails were really narrow and for me to turn around in the dense woods would leave me vulnerable to this guy if he decided to jump me or something. So I just stood there for a minute. We both looked at each other blankly. I said hi. Can I get past you please? He didn't say anything for about another minute. Then he spoke. Would you like a blowjob? Double quote. Needless to say I backed up really fast spun my bike around called him a creepy motherfucker and rode off. Three things that happened on my first deployment. 1. Giant flare. Less than a mile from OP. No concussion. No damage. No explanation. We reported it. Wrote it up. Checked the location the next day for ourselves. Nothing. Three other marines from two other ARPs reported it as well. We were really confused. 2. On a small convoy headed to an air force base in Kuwait. We see what we thought was an aircraft traveling fast as fuck when it reversed its direction in less than a second going faster the opposite direction. We thought. Oh fuck. That must have been a tomahawk. Except they don't have lights or return to sender. Meaning it didn't just loop and hit a target. It basically nope the fuck out the same direction it came in a fraction of a second. Close bracket. 3. Just a feeling some of us got from a building near commando where some of the host nation workers told us that Saddam's men slaughtered Kuwaiti officers. Everyone was spooked by the stupid building and it was likely unfounded but the locals stayed the fuck away from it. I don't know if this applies because it was near my house. But anyway. I lived in a rural area. Though it was fairly close, 25 miles, to the nearest city and maybe 10 miles to the nearest town. One day I was riding the bus to school and saw an odd collection of trash, a mannequin. Shopping cart and tarp hanging from a tree, in the woods to the side of the road. A few days later I noticed it was gone and figured somebody had cleaned it up. Things got weird when it reappeared on a different road after a week or two. This happened a few times over the course of a couple months and I didn't tell anyone because it sounded a bit crazy. Really late one night I was watching TV and my neighbor's dog started barking. This isn't unusual but the nights are extremely quiet and I heard an odd rattling that eventually sounded like a shopping cart. I turned off the TV. Hid under the blankets and watched a disheveled person push a shopping cart with a mannequin in it past my house. This was during the middle of winter. It's bitterly cold. The wind is deadly and feet of snow are fairly common. There was zero chance anyone would believe me so I never said anything. Fast forward several years later and I was home from college for the summer. My mom is an adult protective worker and tells me about a referral she got involving a schizophrenic homeless guy who pushes a mannequin, his wife. Apparently, around in a shopping cart. This was in the city. But she then tells me he for some reason walked all the way to my area and lived in the woods for an entire winter eating roadkill and god knows what else. 
Growing up we had a big house on the water set back a couple acres from the road. Most of the land around us was swamp and when I was 14 my dog brought up part of a human arm. Mom and I were binging heroes, 2007, and Biscuit got out. We ignored him and I saw the dog rush past the library window with what looked like a big old fish swinging in his jaw. I go onto bed and she hollers for me and comes to my room wide eyed. I don't what this is. I go out and it's past the truck and garage in the wide empty space that was there. I shine a light on it and I'm not quite sure what I'm seeing. It's a piece of flesh with three little bones sticking out of one end. My vision does a complete 360 and I curse and look at mom who looks terrified. Ma. You need to call the cops. The police show up. Poke it with a stick then put it in a bag and hold it out the window as they drove to the substation. We later heard reports on CNN about people being cut up and their bodies strewn all along the panhandle. The arm was large and flabby with what looked like a smallpox scar. Our area used to be a hiding place for criminals and bodies. People used to find corpses in their yards after heavy rains. We even had a guy break out of prison transport and run through our yard in the middle of the night. Go to love Florida. I'm an ecologist. Used to work as an environmental monitor for some pretty remote mining operations here in Australia. Long backcountry driving. Taking water samples upstream and downstream of the mine. That sort of thing. Most field days you're looking at about a 12-14 hours day and you're unlikely to see another human being the entire time. During the shorter daylight months I'd often be starting and finishing work in the dark. About a month into the job I noticed when driving down the road through the scrub after sunset there were all these little glimmering reflections on the road and in the grass. As if there were lots of little specks of broken glass reflecting back my vehicle spotlights. After a seeing this every evening for a couple of months I decided to find out what it was. Got out of the truck. Walked over to one and realized it was the reflecting eyes of a spider. Coming out begin their night's hunt. I must have passed millions of them before finding out what they were. I paddled about 240 miles up a river in Canada a few years back. It gets to a point where you end up being completely alone in the wild with no civilization to be found anywhere. So we had a couple of interesting encounters. Both of the ones that really stick out happened at night. One of the first nights we're out there. I'm sleeping in my tent. Comfy as can be. All of a sudden I feel a big snout poking my head through the tent and sniffing. I didn't know what it was. And that it dawned on me. A black bear got curious and decided to sniff around the campsite and he ended up sniffing my face for like 3 minutes. I didn't want to move because I didn't want to startle him. So I was just lying there as this bear sticks his nose in my face and starts huffing. I swear I almost shit myself. The second encounter had the potential to be scary. But I was too busy stifling laughter to really feel fair. One of the last nights we were out there. We decided to set up camp on a little beach. It seemed like a good spot. But after we set up camp. I'm walking around and I notice some moose tracks in the sand. We had set up camp on a little moose watering hole. No big deal. I'm sleeping in my tent and I hear heavy footprints outside. Sick. A moose. Cool beans. I slowly open my tent zipper. As quiet as possible so I wouldn't scare the thing. I'm super excited to see my first moose. Except I didn't see the moose. At least not the whole thing. All I saw was this bull's giant dick dangling down maybe 3 feet in front of my face. Funniest strangest experience of my life by far.